Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to TNO, the last days of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mocha Lover, or Herod Mocha Lover, in which we're playing with Marty Balding Ballman. Right now, we talked about a request from Martinson, in which, if you want to read that again, go right ahead, and we'll talk about that as soon as we read Unleashing the Orpo. The Netherlands has, of course, fallen. History repeats itself, and the cowardly Dutch have capitulated to our forces for the second time in two decades. The war may be won, but battles will continue doubtlessly in the streets and the fields as partisans resist our occupation. A loyal and submissive Reichskommissariat has been re-established, but there are still pockets of resistance among the Dutch to stabilize this conquered land and wipe out the last vestiges of Dutch national daddyism, and the thought hiding within it. The Führer has ordered Ordnung Polizei troops to be unleashed upon the population with immediate effect. Any instigators of anti-German revolt will be hunted down and destroyed for all to see. No one shall escape or grasp. Those hiding in uh, bunkers and basements plotting in warehouses in the wilderness, cleansing or cleaning their weapons under floorboards and within forests, they will all be dragged out by the hairs to face the bullet or the noose. Let the hunt begin. So, party bureaucracy gets more power as well as Ordnung Polizei. Cool. So, they get a new Rex Commissar. Hopefully I can still monetize this video, but I think actually, since I've done, I've done okay with YouTube and monetizing stuff, they kind of supposedly trust me, so... We might be able to get away with a few things. Hopefully. I say that. We'll see what happens. They're going to live by occupational authorities and economy for Germany. You betcha. Apathetic people. I think the vast majority of all populations are pretty apathetic about stuff. Decaying Verzuilung and then busy ports like we saw. So, a request from Martinson. Actually, we'll talk about that first. So, I said I wanted to go down the conservative path, and I still kind of do. But there's some support, actually, for us to go with reformist. In which, it's kind of interesting, even though they're the smallest group with the least amount of power. Now, we definitely don't want militarists, but I'm totally okay with going reformist since some people want it, so, okay. We'll try it, so we have no interactions right now, and because we want to go maybe more reformist, and even though conservatives have the most power, reformist isn't necessarily a bad thing, so if we want to go reformist, uh, and so if we do the top one, we lose room for reformist support as well as loyalist support, which is what we want. Party bureaucracy loses the power, or this is outrageous, Denmark needs a change of leadership. So, here's the thing. I asked you guys yesterday which one we should choose. So, part of me says, I want to go to war and take out Denmark, just because I don't think Denmark really exists, and it's a fake country. But more importantly, actually, when I tally it up, like, the vote between going to war to invade them, as well as be staying independent for them, and keeping their independence, there's pretty much an equal amount of support. Including the influence on each of the likes about who wanted to take them out, and who wanted them to be independent. So it came down to the simple question. Do we want Bo Cohen 1 to exist in the future? Because it's 1964. Well, I don't think so. As much I want to go visit his grandparents. So, we're going to need a change in leadership, and I don't want to lower reformist loyalty anyways, so. They need to go. So, I mean, there was literally an equal amount of support, pretty much, for independence or that support, so. Regardless, we have other comms to go to, and you got to about the Krieg in Sudan, or Im Sudan. So, so, some of you guys recommended we help out the Southwest Rex Commissary, as well as Central Africa. And I guess also Africa as well. So let's get involved maybe a little bit more. We, d we did at the end of the last episode create some uh, Fallschirm Jägers. Or was it Falling something Hunters? So like probably plane hunters. Or people who descend from planes. Show propaganda efforts. Equipment decisions. Reinforcement decisions. Well, is there anything we need to reinforce a war effort? War involvement must be at least 0% or higher. Ooh. We just need more political power. So I want us in at least one division. War involvement will increase by 5%. Arsenal of Africa. Well, we need some money to do that. Heim ins Reich. The camera flash lit up the walls of the Prague castle as Führer Bollmann and Krosik exited after several hours of negotiations, clasping hands in a firm handshake. The smiles showed the negotiations had been a success. The crowd roared as theatrically placed swastika banners rolled down the wall in bright scarlet. Bollmann's handling of the negotiations has been praised by party apparatus for his bloodless and linked to the long-term bohemian problem, and the streets of Germany has been filled with cheers as an, at another successful acquisition for the Reich. Bohemia is back for good. Oh. Nice. We just straight up annex him. That's awesome. Do we get a core of them? We do. Wow. I like that a lot. Um, ooh, Pans, SS Panzer. And also, there's one comment. Another reason why I decided to go to war with these guys is because they're led by an SS officer, and eventually if Bormann, not Bormann, uh, Himmler decides to uh, do some naughty things to us, well, we best be ready for him. So. All you guys, make sure you're Infantry Division 2. Throw you right there. Thank you. And you guys, you know what? Mm. You're gonna be special divisions. There you go. Good luck. Their strength will drop immediately. Wow, that looks really bad. Well, they have current manpower is 57%. Current fighting strength is 3%. So let's go ahead and get involved. Unless there's something up here. Reclaiming the Pact. 
Uh, Denmark has been a faction, so we gotta get rid of Denmark first. Reconnect with old friends. We oh, that's true. We get eight. This is still the first turn. I really ooh political power ooh that one to four points. We're gonna lose if we don't do anything here. We need army XP and or a hundred thousand from liquid reserves, which we do not have. So we're probably gonna lose this one. Probably gonna lose Hungary. I mean, it is what it is. I'd rather help out these guys down here. I'll be honest. I'd much rather help out these guys. So reinforce the war effort or reduce the war effort. Good. Shank. Oh wait. Oh, we get that anyways. Um, two divisions. I guess I'll send both. I don't really care. We won't. Doesn't mean we have to use two divisions. I'll just probably just be using one for a while. Oh, we're gonna send quite a few planes. That's kind of nice. Not gonna lie, that's kind of nice. All right. So you guys are. Uh, fighters, go and duplicate you guys. There we go. And then do we have any extra spare planes? Attack helicopters? Any regular s jets? Cass? A little bit. Not a lot. But you know what? Jet tactical bombers are okay. I love Cass. I love Cass so much. Um, deploying, deploying, deploying. Look, I'm down there. We are running out of resources. Probably, I'm going to assume it's just... Um, rubber. Ah, it's just the situation. That'll be very, very good. Other uh, comment says, someone, someone suggests that we should play as Finland. Now, I don't know if they have a unique focus tree. Maybe, but eventually... But maybe. We'll see what happens. In the fact of the, the Reich and a thousand pieces, modifier will be reduced. Wait. Ooh, ooh. World support, stability, mobilization speed. That's honestly not that bad. So I'm not too worried about that. Valmok led reconstruction efforts. Less division speed, more factory repair, free repair planning speed. Eh, eh. Urban reconstruction debt will rise. Poverty, uh, ooh, that's not bad. GDP growth will increase a little. Debt will rise. I do want to help out though. I really do. Help the hunter. Restore the profit division. Who took us to fight? Let's do help the hunter. Although a significant distance from the front lines, Rex Commissar Siegfried Müller's enthusiasm for hunting and warlord-like behaviors may prove useful to our campaign. Yet, his penchant for warfare isn't particularly important. No, it is Central Africa's strategic location and natural resources that give Müller his true value. Thereby, as best we choose not to disfavor the Rex Commissariat in favor of its continental contemporaries. So we could probably just win the war, hopefully, with just one division doing everything. Especially when we have air support sent down here too. So, the invasion of Denmark. Oh crap! Now, we oh man. Yeah, that's why uh, I'd love to help out, but we will never give in to the demands of an upstart dame. Maltesen and his clique of traitors have spat on the open hand of friendship we have offered our loyal collaborators, choosing to conduct their murderous coup in a pathetic attempt to derail our great plans for gradual integration. We will never allow something as fickle as borders to separate the German people from their radical racial brethren racial brethren to the north. Whether it happens in the next few years or the next few decades, Denmark will join the Reich. Only an egotistical fool such as Maltesen would delay the inevitable. The time has come to ready the hay on Pepeafal invasion. We will launch our march into this little nation with ease, gutting down any resistance, stomping out any dissent, and stringing these pathetic Dutch national socialist daddies up by the necks to hang in the streets of Copenhagen. Very good. I want to give, give it, our guys some time. I mean, these guys will be... We'll quickly munch through them, but I want to help our guys down here just a little bit more, just because there are quite a few planes, and I want our guys to get a little bit more involved, so... And we've got like 15 days before that happens. Any research? Oh, the wall report. Cigar Bowman asks as he lit up the thick brown cylinder hanging from his mouth. No, thank you, my fear. Havel replied politely, raising his hands in protestation. I don't partake. Me neither. Bowman inhaled deeply and closed his eyes, smoke streaming from his piggy nose towards the Reich Minister, who waved his hands in restrained annoyance. Continue. The war in South Africa is not going as planned, unfortunately. Herzog and the Boers have proven to be a useful ally and will provide us with a loyal state when this war is over. Of that I am certain. Yet, the Africa Shield is facing greater resistance than anticipated. From what I understand, Hutig, Schenk, and Muller all expected a swift and relative costless victory over South Africa. And then Nixon, Nixon intervened, Bowman raised an eyebrow, and then Nixon intervened. American propaganda is referring to South Africa as a domino that will soon fall to national socialism unless they provide military assistance, and the troops are proving to be determined and brutal in combat. The South Africans have har hardly been feeble opponents either. They're, they are of Anglo-Saxon blood. It should not surprise us that the Germanics would resist us so effectively. Bowman remained deep in thought, rolling a cigar into his fingers. I want daily reports on the military situation. I want to know what every state is doing and how effective they're doing it, from Leopoldville to Cape Town. Yes, my fear. From one war to the next. I really just want to kill these enemy planes, because if we can kill these enemy planes off quickly enough, um, well, we can do really quite a good job. Alright, so nothing's really here. How about over here? Building. We're building tons of civilian factories. We've got to get that GDP up, and I guess we're building a nuclear reactor in Welch, Hopshot, and Germania. 
Cool. A new Rex Commissar, our swift invasion of civilization of the Netherlands, has brought it whimpering across before us, begging for clemency. While we never forget this heinous betrayal for the sake of the politics, we must forgive them. Yet, under their administration, loyal to the party in Reich, will be established so that we may continue the process of Germanization and exploitation of resources. A new Rex Commissar yet requires a new Rex Commissar, and the Fuhrer has yet to decide who is worthy, talented, and loyal enough to replace the late Arthur Sick. Say yes, in quote. On one hand, opponent a German would send a stock message to the people of the Netherlands that resistance has consequences and that they will forever bow to the Reich. On the other hand, however, a Dutch leader may be able to inspire more respect among his people. Wilhelm Rutherbusch served dutifully in the previous administration under Sayas Inquart, proving himself to be a dedicated bureaucrat. Were we to appoint a German, he is the obvious choice. The Dutch fascist and Lord collaborator H. A. Sinclair de Rochemont, however, is also aptly suited to the job. Morbin Bormann must use wisely. Only German can administer Rex Commissariat appoint. What a bush. Okay. Or Dutchman will provide more stability. It's like De Rochemont. More reformist loyalty, which is probably the way we want to go. I kind of want to put it in a German, but whatever. So, these guys are in opposition. Hmm. And they're quite reform minded. These, are, these guys are allied, so we want to reduce the power of the militarists. I really don't want to reduce the power of the conservatives, but if we have to, so be it. And. Hmm. Allied? We want to increase the power. Opposition of the banks. First of all, can we lower the power? Oh, we need. Oh, crap. We need political power to do this? Oh, that's not good. How much political power do we get? Well, that's not bad. Over two a day. Uh, the church. Is anyone close to getting more reform? I don't mind getting more reforms. 34, 27. Hmm. Allied peoples. Well, we can't really do too much, can we? Since we don't have enough political power. Which really sucks, so... Well, we're gonna lose political power anyways, just gonna do this one. And our guys are gonna be sent back, whatever. And let's go in and do soldiers to soldiers. Sadly, our fatherland's once world-renowned infrastructure lies in ruin. Our cowardly enemies are having deliberately destroyed the gross Germanic right through their own greed and lust for power. Of course, one cannot be a superpower if one's nation is a depressing, smoking hole in the ground. Therefore, to destroy the gross Germanic right most crucial infrastructure, soldiers with engineering skills or experience are to be put to work, and for they will help reconstruct our shattered fatherland. Finland, do you have a focus tree? They do not, so when they do get one, hopefully someday, we will go ahead and help and have a good time with them, so... Go ahead, I'm not too worried about these guys, so have at the though quite a bit of lag here though. Let's see. Yep, that's what I recommend. We help out Sweet Best Africa and Central Africa. We're gonna help out all the Africas. So we'll see about that. And a valuable man. Rex Commissar Müller, Bowman grumbled down the phone, wiping his bleary eyes. Of the many skills he had accumulated while serving as Hitler's deputy, none had proven to be so useful as his ability to work with 20 hours a day and sleep for a remaining four. He was reaching his 19th hour of intense diplomatic maneuvering and aching, aching fatigue was creeping over him. Ah, hi, Bowman. It's an absolute pleasure to speak to you, my Fuhrer. Uh, Müller's cheery voice made Bowman grind his teeth. As annoying as the man was, he had admittedly proven himself to be a valuable asset to the Reich. Oh, yes, yes, Bowman replied hastily. There's no time for pleasantries, I'm afraid. There's much to discuss. The Reich must coordinate its efforts with the Reich's commissariat in Central Africa. If we are to prevail in this war, our generals will work together to organize strategy, and I will send some weapons and men to boost your army. Excellent, Mirla exclaimed with a laugh. I must confess I was rooting for you throughout the whole Bürgerkrieg. Know that fear would bother helping us in the struggle against these unruly South Africans. I guarantee it. Bowman sighed. Cacophony or... Sycophancy. Oh, da da Sycophancy had been another one of his many skills, and certainly he knew how to detect it in other people. Nonetheless, Mueller was correct. Only a man like Bormann had the determination to aid the African Rex Commissariat in this war. He stifled a yawn. The encroaching Emperor's embrace of sleep could wait another hour. Maybe two. Maybe two. What do we have over here? Yeah, I'm, I'm completely ignoring Hungary right now, because there's, no, there's nothing we can do about it. Awesome of Africa. Ooh. Party bureaucracy. So, hold on. Before we do that... Drain $25 million from our own liquid reserves to help them out. Party bureaucracy, are they loyal or what? Bureaucracy, they're immutable. They're more conservative, so... Eh, I don't want to lose civilian factories. We'll do okay. Hey, we got Ruben back. Now, that's a nice flag, Denmark. No, 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 that's okay. Alright, so with them, kaput. The Line of Crimea. At the outbreak of the Burger Krieg, Gross Admiral Dönitz, a genuine national socialist and enthusiastic supporter of Führer Bormann, took the Krieg's Marine to Crimea so they may be safeguarded from the monstrous, monstrous claws of the gross Germanic Reich's most loathsome traitors. But the Burger Krieg now over. We must give Dönitz a deserving hero's welcome back to the Fatherland. Well, we'd like to do that, but let's keep doing this stuff for now and send our boys back. Especially the planes. Uh, they should be somewhere here. Oh, there they are. 
Did I send more than these guys? I'm pretty sure I sent more than that. There you go. You guys go down there. Follow it up with these guys. That'd be delightful. Rex Gomesa Rochemont. Rex Gomesa Nederland needs a leader. Uh, and the rebellious nature of the Dutch has proven that we must rely on a man of Dutch stock to stabilize his own nation and take command of its administrative affairs. The Führer will help our point H. A. Sinclair de Rochemont, a man who collaborated closely with the Reich after our invasion of 1940 to serve as a new Reich Commissar. The Dutch will certainly respect him, and even may grow to love him. Only those who rebel against the Reich shall have to fear him. Let de Rochemont's appointment be a lesson to the Dutchmen. If your brethren are leading you to glory, you must follow in their footsteps or be left behind in the dirt. Time will soon tell how the great results of the fear's shrewdness be will happen. The Netherlands is ours, Heil Ballman. Very good. Ballman is a man with quite the plan. Cool. If you'd like to read about him, go right ahead. But yeah, we, we definitely want to get maybe some of this stuff done. Um, even if we get... Even if we can do this one. It takes 25 political right? You get up to 4 max, so... The Skagerrag secure. Denmark has fallen. General August Bugdorf Chol Cholto raising his glass of schnapps. Slung the Denmark. Baldur von Schirach and Walter Havel raise their glasses with laughter while the rest of the cabinet aggressively slap the table in celebration. Bormann sighed and shuffled his paperwork. Calm down, comrades, Bormann snapped. We haven't just conquered America, have we? Denmark is, on, is back in a group and Martinson is due to be hanged to the public. Let's move on. He turned his glare towards Bogdorf and Havel. There are some of the parties who suggest I should transform Denmark into a Rex Commissariat to prepare for its genuine integration. The idea is tempting, I must admit. What do you say? I'm sure the militarists would enjoy that very much, Bogdorf replied bitterly. If you want my advice, we should be or we should establish a puppet republic actually run by the Danes. That'll grant us the stability we crave, I guarantee it. Hey, Bo and a few others nodded in agreement. Woman sat back and ran the proposal through his head, a puppet republic run by Danes. Karl Pop Madsen, for example, would certainly bring about the stability, however. It's also true that many in the party desire talk of Denmark's integration to turn into actual policy. Denmark will be established with a, should be established with immediate effect. Appoint Madsen as a leader of the new puppet government? Well Hmm. Oh no. I would like to just integrate them, and we can make puppet states out of other people. And these guys are next, Kromosara Niederlande. Hmm. But we... Uh, we gave... It's a Reichskommissar led by Dutchman. Which I don't mind having a Dane lead, but I want a Reichskommissar at Denmark. Well, there'll be a Reichskommissar anyways, right? Hmm. The birth of Reichskommissar at Denmark. Because Denmark is just Denmark. And they have an Agarian economy. Um. Hmm. Well, that would improve the military's briefing. Uh, I'll do that one. I don't want the military to be too happy, right? Germany restores order over Central Europe. Long live the Reich. Cool. Oh, reconnect with old friends. Well, we can't. We don't have liquid reserves. And we don't have any army XP, so we just be we're just probably gonna fold this one. Unless we can get this one really quickly. This one takes ten days. That would leave us twenty-five days again. And we'll see what happens. It's probably a waste to do, but whatever. And I do want to do more interactions, because that's much more important to do right now. So Alright, soldiers and builders, and then we shall do Eh, we can do this one. Not oh, that's a call pop Matson. Not standrushed. Following the invasion and military occupation of Denmark, the Führer has officially chosen to transform the Protectorate into a collaboration of the Republic. The newly established government will be run by Karl Pop Madsen, a former member of the Danish National Socialist Movement and loyal politician to the Reich. Without the legal hurdles in place during the nation's existence as a Protectorate, and without the influence of the king to hold us back, Bowman is expected to rule the... the Expected the rule of Denmark to increase in efficiency without stirring up too much dissent among the population. Denmark has returned to us. Good. In 1933, Adolf Hitler passed a Ermachtigungsgesetz under the guise of a state emergency. In a similar vein to his predecessor, Martin Bormann shall once again institute a non stand Rex in order to reaffirm his supreme rule over the Gross Germanische Reich as its sphere. Once enacted, Bormann will have the ability to pass laws and dictate Germany's fate without the interference of anybody else. It will get more political power, which is exactly what I want. Exactly. Cool. Oh, wow. We still get 2.56 every day. I love that. All right. So, over here, we want to go more conservative. So, military support has to go down. Their opposition. Military support. Military support. Conservative. We got to really reform and support. We really want more conservative stuff. Here, maybe IG Fobin, Allied Church Power. These guys have a lot of... How do we get more uh, faction? Immutable. What is immutable? How do we change that? Well, reformists... Two reformers' loyalty to the body of bureaucracy, more power. Well, 
They're twenty five percent, which is okay. These guys are, are I really want the hair, so oh we need more political power to do that. That's why I'm saving political power. I want more power to the here. Reformists, not bad, not bad. Oh good, the division's actually arrived. Uh, I'm just going to send you to do what I want you to do, so that'll be good. Uh, if you have Moscow, Shona, less supply and stuff, probably not a bad idea. Alright, so what we're going to do, maybe we'll try to come over here. They looks like they might have only one division, maybe? There we go. You're over here, but whatever. And you guys, where are you at? How many enemy plans do they have? Do I have to double this? Oh, that's fine with me. We can make more planes. Let's see. I'll just do it down here. We got plenty of helicopters. Or attack helicopters, I should really say. You know what? I'm bringing the jet CVs, even though I don't really want to use them too much. Because they're CVs, uh, they're, they still have use. They absolutely still have use. And boom. There you go. And that's going to really help us get a lot more air XP. So, can we do anything here, maybe? No? Oh, man. These guys are probably pretty thick. Oh, it's mountains, too, so what do you expect? Well, what if we try to go this way? Can you guys do anything there, maybe? Ooh, that is quite a bit of lag. Holy cow. Oh. Rumors from the Dark Continent, huh? So, Bowman signed the last of the Fuhrer Befels, directing the economic restoration of the Rhineland, and handed the stack to his attendant secretary with a dismissive nod. Yet, the man hesitated. The Fuhrer gave a tired sigh. What is it, Velfred? There's another matter of mine, Fuhrer. While you were having your lunch earlier, a letter arrived to the Chancellor. From the stamps, I believe it's from one of the military intelligence services. It only reads a revised information summary regarding high-value individual though. Well, Borman picked up his interest captured. Did you show anyone else? No, mind fear. Besides the mailroom clerk and the senior secretariat, no one knows. As you've told me to do with sensitive materials, I especially kept it away from the girls. Good, their loyalty is dubious. I can tell in their eyes after they've been after they've been to see me. Oh. Uh, fetch me the letter, I will review it immediately. Minutes after Borman had the crisp blue, a thick grain paper of the envelope in his hands, eagerly cutting it open with a letter knife. The document inside was, however, very thin and slightly yellowed. The ink of the letters a slight a light gray from low pressure typing intended to preserve the paper after airmail. Borman knew it was from one of the African Rex Commissariats even before seeing the stamp of the Abwehr Africa Abteilung. His eyes scanned the document rapidly, skimming most of the text. It assessed a factor, highly reliable. Hitler's contacts, it was there. E. Eber. Zentra Africa. The fear did not need to check his list of coordinate names to know who Eber was. That fat pig, the time has come for him to squeal, but first, grabbing the snake in the grass by the tail. Wilfred, give me Siegfried Müller. Anything here we need to know about? No. And we're losing here. Why are we losing all the time? Like, I don't understand, like, this. We have more than enough fighters. They are doing air superiority. We have CVs. Well, we have 200, basically, jet fighters in the air. How are we not winning here? Ireland seeks to join the pact. Now that the rightful government of the German Reich has triumphed, our old allies seek to join us once again. This time, Ireland is requested to join the pact once more as Bundespartner. This request particularly co coincides with the fact that Ireland is currently suffering a deep economic crisis. Thankfully for them, we feel generous to accept our old Gaelic partners in their sphere to maintain our control over the European continent. With Ireland back under our wings, we regain our strategic position to project our naval power on the Atlantic. Piece by piece, we are recovering our old strength, showing the Japanese savages and the American plutocrats that the Reich is back on the game. Welcome back. A shocking admission. My spies have told me something similar. Bowman could sense defeat in Miller's voice as he regained his composure as he decided to let the obvious flies by, uh, fly by. The Reich Tomasar admitted he had goring in Central Africa and that was what mattered. Good. Then I proposed joint action to take on the fugitive. I will have some experts flown down to assist your men in the arrest of the possibly dangerous individuals he had no doubt brought with him. I expect pro a prompt result, Miller. You, your position may depend on it. Hanging up, he could not suppress a grin and barely stopped himself from drumming a cheery tune on his desk. A cheery tune. He knew he would dream sweet dreams tonight of Goring crying and pissing himself as his men closed in. This victory had been a long time coming. Death comes for all in the end. A hard pill to swallow, eh? Um, can we actually attack there? There's only one division. Okay, so this division is not very good. That's only, oh, no wonder. It's only 12 combat with. Why am I attacking with garbage divisions? We shouldn't be. And uh, we have no army XP either. God dang it. Ah. The best I can send is, you know, air support for now. Uh, get some better jet fighters. Why not? There's no openings and everything is just kind of at a standstill. Oh, actually, there's a lot of openings on our side. That is not ideal. What else is going on? Oh, molding? Don't care about molding. 12 combat width is definitely not enough. 
Oh, Daz? Uh, yeah, we're, even though it already happened. We got up to five. We actually got, uh, was it four? That's not bad. But we can't do it again, which is kind of stupid, but whatever. 20%. Protest, small involvement. Yeah, that's not bad. That's so dumb. But whatever. Interactions. Loyalty. Uh, let's see. Militarist. Less. Less power. Um, two militarist loyalty. I kind of prefer the reformers, actually, maybe. These guys are... Can, is there any way to flip them to be more in support of us? Because these are in opposition, but the reformers are leading. Conservatives. Allied. Well, it's either conservatives that are leading or reformists. Militarists. Well, hmm. Let's see, support 40, support 90, support 40. Faction loyalty. Hmm. Well, how do we take down the militarists then? We need... Oh, wait. Did I already do an action? Oh, I did not do an action. I... Wait, what happened to my political power? I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything yet. I don't think I did, did I? Maybe I did. Hmm. I'm going crazy. As you can tell. I'm going very crazy. And what's going on over here? Wow, this game lags super hard. Okay, Kennedy's gone. I guess that makes sense. All right, come on over here, too. Come on back. You are fully ready to go. Not stands Rex. And urban reconstruction. The series of the Ghost Germanicus Reich have suffered tremendous amounts of dis destruction and pain as a direct result of heavy house to house fighting during the Burger Creek. Fear of bombing should not allow for the Reich's population to live in miserable squalor anymore. We must enact a policy of rapid urbanization or urban reconstruction. The Reich shall bloom with prosperity and happiness once more as we rebuild and revitalize our once beautiful cities. Goring the Coward. Marcel groaned as he and Klaus dropped the carcass into the shallow grave. The former pretender to Hitler's throne had lost weight, but it was still a hassle to shift him from the truck to over to his final resting place. As he looked on the mud-smeared, pitiful heap wrapped in his own coat, Marcel couldn't believe that just yesterday the former Führer had terrified him, terrified him for a few moments. The Germans had entered the mansion first to make sure Goring was not on the ground floor. His own Belgians followed close behind to give fire support against the military's hardliners who had followed the leader into exile. His lieutenant was in the process of giving him an order when the pistol bullet had ripped through his gut. Atop the staircase on Marcel's left, the former Rex Marshal had stood, wide-eyed and with a half-button gray coat on despite the African heat. For whatever reason, he never put a second shot in Marcel, but retreated to his office. The young man's heart had been pounding the rest of the entire battle until they stormed Goring's office. Luckily for them, there was no casualties in taking the man into arrest as he was already dead by the time they arrived. He turned to the officer from Germania who was ordering the other mercenaries and soldiers from the high to grab shovels. You want to see us, Hauptmann? Indeed, Herr Dupont. You and Herr uh, Volnit here were the ones to define the traitor's suicide note. Please sign this document. Marcel frowned as he signed the piece of paper on Klaus's back. There was a suicide note? Of course, Herr Bukhard. You read it yourself. He wrote of how radical militarists had strung him along to betray the rightful Führer. He had killed himself in shame over the devastation chaos had brought to the Reich. He even ended it with a call for all Germans to rally around the Führer Bowman. You wouldn't forget that, would you? Marcel's eyes widened. Of course, Hauptmann. We remember now, don't we, Klaus? A circus flies no more. Delightful. Now, I'd love to do this, but I really want to help these guys down here. I want to get, uh, or end their involvement, the, oh, offensive involvement down here. Alright, so, party bureaucracy. Oh, party, oh, this is just, yeah, just party bureaucracy. They have pencil pushers, huh? Uh, historically under the influence of the former chief of the NSDAP Chancellery. Oh, okay. Uh, well, let's, I don't want to chip away that stuff. These guys, I'm kind of okay with maybe the people? Maybe more loyalty to the reformists? And reformists and more. Okay, that's looking a little better. So, reformists are coming up a little bit more. Conservatives maybe chop, getting chopped off a little bit more. You know, whatever. Faction loyalty. There's not much else we can do there. Hopefully I'm doing this right. I could be completely wrong in what I'm doing, but whatever. Tension is in the Vikes. Uh, the general government. Ah, Slovakia. We could do that stuff, but I really, really want to help these guys out down here. So, two divisions should be good enough to push them out, right? But if we force the attack, that would probably kill off our divisions. But we can actually push these guys out and... And circle and destroy these guys as well. So that'll be good, actually. Finally, we can win a battle. Thank you for smoking. And so Bowman began scribbling his signature at the bottom of the document. The will of the people is written into law. Let us pass around the body and blood of Christ in celebration. With a grin of vicious mockery, Bowman opened his silver cigar box and passed his contents to three of the men gathered around the table. 
The Central African Baldur von Chirac nodded approvingly, smoke streaming from his mouth and nose. The sales will skyrocket when this law comes into effect. It was a stroke of genius to lift those smoking restrictions, my fear. Gerhard Klopfer nodded eagerly. He sucked on a cigar and exploded into a fit of coughs. Von Chirac rolled his eyes. After the horrors of the Burger Krieg, the people need some relief, Baldwin smirked. It just so happens that the will of the people is the will of Europe. He took another puff and turned to Werner Naumann, who had opted to not to smoke. Werner, I want the RMVP to start producing smoke, pro smoking propaganda. I reverse our stance completely, but connected to a bill like Fuhrer after all. Hitler himself told me of his plans to lift restrictions as he laid on his deathbed. Smoking does not harm the Aryan body. <laughs> uh, obviously. Obviously. Good. Good. Hang out. Enjoy yourselves. For the Fuhrer wants us all to smoke. Not going up too much higher. War report. Very cool. And urban reconstruction is going to take a while, and we're still doing well here. What is this? Civilian budget boost? No, no, no. Build, build, build. Uh, I'm not going to cut military spending at this point. We could use a few more attacks here and there, so. Oh, they are attacking, huh? Oh, good. Iconoclasm. Arnold Brecker stared at the shattered stone that used to be a beautiful bust of Albert Spian lamented. Such an ordinary piece of art reduced the role with the change of leadership. Brecker, as always, kept his mouth shut, complaining about the desecration of his work and aroused suspicion, and his recorded friendship with Spian only muddled the waters further. The sculptor mopped around the gallery, uh, or the gallery assessing the damage. The expertly crafted bust of Bauman, Havel, and of course Hitler were all intact. Brecker stopped in his tracks. Atop of the small marble podium, one that had once been a beautiful effigy of Reichsmarschall Goring, was empty. Oh well, it had been an excellent bust of a horrible man. Brecker's blood suddenly ran cold. Why had they just taken the bust of Goring, but then left Spiel's shattered on the floor? Was this a message? He could took he took a deep, shaking breath. He was just an artist. So why did he feel so much dread? Because he knew what was coming. Good. Very good. Let these guys stop a little bit more. What do we have over here? Like by mandate. Ooh, uh restore Luftwaffe divisions? Huh. Though it goes down. Anything else? Oh, we lost turn one. Turn two, we are starting at one and going up to eight, huh? Less manpower. And less political power. Well, we can do these two. Let's try it. We're going to do both anyway, so it won't matter. Can you guys actually win here? Maybe? Yes? No? Maybe so? No? Yes? No? Okay, just hold on. They will stop supplies, hopefully. Slowly helping them out. Oh, and actually, any more interactions, maybe? No. Hmm. We empower more other conservative, other reformists. So militarists, like the Polizei, we probably want to subtract their loyalty and subtract their power. No, no, we want to subtract power from the opposition. Yeah, what would we do that actually? Let's do the banks and lower their power. Maybe that will be good to do first. And after this, we should go ahead and do. Uh, this seems like it's taking a while to do. But, uh, Schwarze Adler. The deserts of Sudbes Africa aren't good for much other than droving cattle. They spread out for miles, no settlement in sight, scarcely any civilization at all, barring the German settlements on the coast of Windhoek and Vavis Bay. The one thing that is truly suited for her is reaching the air. The air fleet envisioned and developed by the Rockskommissar Schenk is the being hot of Sudbes Africa, carrying goods where no road goes, maintaining communications across vast swaths of barren belt and deep jungle, and delivering justice to any unruly natives who get the wrong ideas. Maintaining the support of the fleet will be vital if we are to make progress in Africa. Ah, oh, I don't you love lag. Cool. And do we have anything here? Uh, exploit family ties. Yes, please. Anything else? 17.3. We're not going to get more and more involved. That would be a bad idea. And when can we do this again? Oh, there we go. Good. Uh, the banks. Less power. Can we do that again? Uh, reformists, actually. More loyalty. Oh, wait, no. I clicked on this. Oh, well, we got more reformists here, then. Well, god dang it. I guess you have to manually click one each every time, maybe. There you go, maybe. Ah, oh, good. Help them out, help them out. Should move quickly enough. Good. Attack. Ah, good. The South African divisions. I shall go bye bye. Are they even more soldiers in there? Oh, maybe they're just retreating. Goodbye. Ah, Heil Zeit. Eins. Oh, look at that. Spending 10.7. Whatever. Thomas sat cross-legged in front of the TV, watching the events unfold on screen with utter jubilation. He knew that his mother would scold him if she got little Thomas sitting so close to the TV. It was bad for his eyes, he always said, but this was his favorite show, and it w wasn't about to miss a single moment. Thomas couldn't decide which of the villains he hated more. There was the Bolshevik dressed in red, Speer always trying to sabotage all the good people's work, the half-crazy, the crazy half-human, half-rabbit dog goring, the foam from his mouth spitting, constantly spitting out all over three of his chins, and how Thomas could ever forget that. Hey, just a male 
that pulled around and controlled by the de devilish schemers off screen. Each of them was so terrible in their own way, thank God they were all gone. Even more than he hit the villains, though, Thomas loved the hero, Ballman. The knight in shining armor, clad like a Teutonic knight from the history books. No matter how bad of shape the villainous trio managed to get Germany into, Ballman would arrive without fail by the end of the episode, foiling all his rivals' evil plots and brutally smiting their henchmen with his mighty sword. Seeing his boyhood hero beat up the bad guys and never failed to get Thomas jumping up and down excitedly, and the show seemed to accommodate that. Every episode capped off with the action of Heil Zeit. A minute-long musical segment where a patriotic anthem played over a montage of images of the two Führers, Ballman and Hitler. As glued as he was to the TV show when the show was playing, Thomas never failed to get up onto his feet and yell for the neighbors to hear when the Heil Zeit played. He had happily singing Heil along, laughing all the while. Heil Hitler, Heil Ballman, Heil Hitler, Heil Ballman, Heil Hitler, Heil Ballman. Ad nauseum. Those who have the youth on their side control the future. Oh, ain't that the truth. Demographics are the future, my friends. Hmm, where do we want to engage next? Perhaps here. They do have some land fort, but perhaps that'll be good enough. Hutek has to suffice. Hans Hutek, the Erect Commissar of Ost Africa, is a deeply unpleasant man. The former concentration camp commander is taking those lessons to heart in Ost Africa's role like a country sized version of Buchenwald. His cruelty is known from the Atlantic to the Indian Ocean. His racially pure SS troops enforce a strict, strict caste system over the African subjects. And that hair. Still, he's just an effective tool against the South Africans and must be aided, even if he doesn't keep insisting Rex Commissar appears. Ah. Traitors. A loyal man, Heil Ballman, Schenk spoke in his usual polite tone. Despite being a famous fighting ace, the Rex Commissar suit at Best Africa was a humble man just as loyal to the Rex now as he'd been all those years ago. Whether he was soaring over the crumbling Soviet Union or ruling over African territory, Wolfgang Schenk always remained a valuable asset to the Reich. Heil Bowman, Bowman replied, I am calling you to discuss the future of the Rex coordination with the African Rex Commissariats. It is utmost importance that we crush the South Africans and establish Herzog as a loyal puppet. Thank you for your support, Schenk responded after a few moments of silence. Many of your generals have already reached out to mine to discuss strategy. I wish to discuss one such strategic proposal with you, Rex Commissar. Bowman replied, <clears throat> Your investment in the suit vest African Luftwaffe ensures our ability to control the skies over South Africa. However, you seem to invest it a little too much. According to our reports, you appear to have more planes and pi fighter pilots. In this case, any surplus ground personnel must be conscripted into a brand new Luftwaffe field division. By fear of the training squad required would, Shake began, this isn't a suggestion, Rex Commissar Bowman Ground, this is an order. I understand my fear. Ooh, they get more manpower. This is good for them. Good for them. Uh, how about the. Ah, good. And the destruction of enemy units continues. False defense. Ah, what do we have over here? Anything? Six and eight. Ooh, we just don't have liquid reserves. I mean, why Why are we... Why do we just spend liquid reserves? Of, out of all things, it's for this. Um, Militaries lose loyalty? That's fine. Alright, so we want this. The banks have got to lose power. There we go. That's better. That's definitely better. Who took advice? 90, 40. Let's see. 440 for the reformist. For okay, not bad. It's gonna take some it's gonna take a lot of time for this to work for us. So, honorary Boers, honorary Aryans. The Boers are long removed from the Dutch ancestors after two centuries of British rule, but they've maintained their Aryan blood nonetheless. They found their Lebensraum on the Welt, just as we did in the East, and have done an admirable job spreading Aryan hegemony on the Great Trek. The German people will be reminded of this. The Boers will be officially confirmed as an Aryan race. As they should be. Uh, because they're exhausted to come out. An SS man. The very first moment Bowman laid eyes on the hulking Rex Commissar of Africa, he despised him. Time it served only to exacerbate this hatred. Hans Hutick was an SS man through and through, a barely closeted, closeted admirer of Oldenshaw Bergen, who had doubtlessly spent the last few years saluting portraits of Hadrish in the privacy of his African villa. As the Burger Creek raged on, Schenk and Muller had also remained neutral, it was true, but out of sheer pragmatism. As far as Bowman was concerned, Hutick's loyalties lay elsewhere. The phone clicked. Heil Bowman came the clip voice of the Rex Commissar. Did you receive my formal congratulations on your success in the Burger Creek? I did not. There's much I did not receive from you, Reichskommissar. There was a brief pause. I took it as a point of principle to maintain neutrality. It would be a threat to us, Africa's stability, if its leadership were to make such a dangerous gamble. Bowman ground his teeth, but did not reply. I understand that this call concerns the war. Yes, we must <clears throat> work together. If we are to defeat the capitalists, the Reich shall be providing aid to each of the Reichskommissariats to ensure a German victory in the Dark Continent. It would be much appreciated, Hutte growled. The Jews in the Washington have trained their mongrels well. The Americans are putting up a fierce fight. We will crush them in due time, Baldwin replied. We have much to discuss and much to plan. Are we still building or not? It seems like we're, our building is very, very slow. But then again, there's so much that must occur. Actually, did you guys... Eh, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Ah, actually, you're already both here. 
If you can take that for supplies, might as well, right? Good. Just in case, we already maxed this air assault out. That's not bad. Special forces, hot acclimatization factor. Eh, we could. I don't really feel like doing that one. Let's get some better guns, maybe. Uh, maybe anti tank. I don't know. We'll see what happens. All right. So if you can defeat it, just hold then. Deal with this barbarous threat. Jabong. Yeah. Hmm. There you go. Yeah, there's nothing we can do about this. Yeah, we're probably going to end up losing Hungary. Oh, well. Honorary boards, honorary Aryans. The Dissidents War. A wartime strategy should be based on using the war to ri get rid of dissidents. Ally Baffin Gagans with Africa. Our wartime strategy will be based on seeing the war to victory. South Africa must fall? Yes, we will. Like a bloody clinging vine, the South African war continues to hamper our efforts on the Dark Continent. It is critical that this conflict be brought to a swift and decisive conclusion. South Africa victory, which looks more certain by the day, will deny our forces access to, to, to strategic resources from the Congo Basin and the airfields of the Southwest. It will also be a propaganda coup for the American jackals, which is arguably worse and certainly more damaging to the national pride. South Africa must brought, be brought to heel by any means necessary. Attack on two sides. We have enough organization to stomp them out. Our brethren and the Africa. The Fira has delivered a speech regarding the situation in Africa. Broadcast on TV and radio simultaneously released the following day as a transcript in the state newspaper. In his usual speaking style, well trained attempt to imitate Hitler mired by an insecure awkwardness, Bowman delivered the following declaration regarding the racial position of the Boers. Our friends in the autonomous Boer Republic are brave soldiers fighting to protect our land and families. They've embraced the help of the Reich and have promised to join the Einheitspact Pact after the South African War in a display of courage and racial bonding. Yes, racial bond. The Boers are descended from the Dutch and are therefore a Germanic people bound to us by blood and heritage. I hereby declare that the Boer people officially be recognized as Aryans so that we may, we may accept them into our unified or united faction with open arms. The leader of the Boer Republic, Albert Herzog, has already responded to the fear of statement, professing his respect for the German Reich and his gratitude at the racial acknowledgement. Unity in blood. Let's see, another comment was from yesterday. Give more power to the loyal parts of the government to increase power store. Yeah. I mean, our power is already pretty good, so. So, we get lower power, or we get increased power, so. Oh, what do we have now? Anything else? I'm probably stuck down here. Yeah. Oh. We're going to remove more. Oh, that's not bad. I don't really want to help them out with that much, though, to be honest with you guys, though. I really don't care. Train the werewolves. That sounds kind of cool. Oh, we get. Oh, actually, I want to do that one just because it's more army XP. I want army XP. So we can edit these divisions a little better. Can we actually win there? Maybe? Beat up where they have very weak soldiers. That'd be nice. I would love to be able to just move around a little bit more quickly and destroy them, but whatever. Test new weaponry. That's not bad. More division attack and defense and such. Bring the Stahlhelm. New source of income, why not? While the native residents and security forces of our ex commissariats have successfully held the line against the South Africans, it's quite evident to the Fira Bowman that present operational strength is insufficient to bring about the overwhelming superiority necessary for a victory on our terms. The hash shall be brought to the South African conflict, and we shall anticipate no problems with their ability to continue combat in harsh and unforgiving terrain. Germans are, after all, the finest of the world. The arms are. And Germans are, too, but still. Actually, if you want to move fast enough, you can just you probably do this and destroy this division, actually. South Africa must fall. The Reich has promised much aid to the African Reich's commissariats, officially pledging to discuss strategy and coordinate the establishment of new military programs and divisions. As a war against the perfidious South Africans and their American backers, Roy John, the fear has released an official order declaring the Reich's full support of the African shield. It is the duty and obligation of the gross Germanic Reich to defend their territories against the threat of the degeneracy and capitalism and to protect the Aryan race throughout the world. The Aryan Boers deserve a homeland for free from the capitalist clutches of South Africa and the South Africans and their American puppet masters, whose actions against the African Reich's commissariats directly insult the Reich itself. Our efforts of coordination must be placed into immediate and tangible effect so that the Dark Continent remains a stable and prosperous territory for the Germanic race. South Africa must fall. Oh, that's not good. Ooh, military loyalty goes up. I should realize that. Uh, you guys go here and do that. We might die quickly, but that's okay. Good. Okay, there we go. You guys hold. Defend. Glorious. Good. Now we're defending again. Uh, cool. Don't really care what they're up to. Oh, we were defeated, huh? That's fine. The main goal is just to delete enemy divisions, so... Right, head on back and kill them off. Good. Now, I kind of don't mind if you guys actually come down here, maybe, and you might be able to do that as well. Help them out. We can still maybe another Mountaineer division. That'd be quite good. Anything else around here? Yes, three out of three. More loyalty would be pretty good. More reformist. 
439. Oh, the power of the conservatives went way down. Militaries went way up. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Militarists. Loyalty. Well, actually, we would like more loyalty, but power probably needs to go down for these guys. Uh, allied one. Oh, the here. Yeah. Remove the militarist loyalty. Or actually, we want more loyalty. Yeah, whatever. There you go. It's a little better. Slightly better. The hell? Yeah, we don't have enough command power. Or political power. Why does it come out? It, sh it should really cost command power. Not well, I guess political power does make sense, but still. It's, that's a little annoying to do. We might be able to kill them off fast enough. Come on. Yes, we did it, my friends. We did it. Oh, oh boy. There's a whole lot of territory we could probably take right, 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 right around here. Man, if we could get all the way down here or something, that'd be great. Oh, we found an enemy division. Good. Because we're gonna go bye-bye. Goodbye. I don't think I've ever actually played on this side of the South African War. Usually we play on the OFN side and they do pretty well and yeah. We're going to need a little bit more organization. No, no, get back, get back down here. Who's weaker? I oh, got more divisions, huh? Oh, another fall, Shumyega. Good. Actually, can I send another one to you guys? Is that, uh, we probably actually can't. Yeah, we already sent that much over there. Um, if you'd like to, uh, actually, don't do go over here. Nice. Keep them all together just because it's easier for me to just do it like that. There you go. Alright, so. Actually, is this mountains? It's all mountains all over the place, so that's not good. Yeah, hold it. Darn it. It sucks. Alright, so if that's the case, we gotta retreat ourselves. Maybe we can take Johannesburg, maybe? Probably not. There's a lot of Americans over there. Um, hmm. Maybe something over here. I don't know. We'll have to see what happens. Uh, next focus, shall we? Test new weaponry, no restraints. You get more command power, every army leader more breakthroughs. So the Reich's top scientific and military minds have suggested to Fyodor Bowman that perhaps a Wunderwaffen could turn the tide in South Africa for the Reich. For the Reich. Indeed, a sensible organ suggestion, we are far more advanced than our opponents and have the capacity to develop new advanced weaponry. Thus, perhaps it's time we test some new experimental weapons upon our enemies. Oh, yes, please. Hungary, what's the Hungarian thing looking like now? Six and eight? Oh, that sucks. That so sucks. Yeah, we're not gonna get hungry, whatever. Alright, so increase the power maybe of the hair. Increase that. And performers are coming up, which is nice. And now it's 441, 10049. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, trying to get the performance in power is probably quite a stretch. It doesn't look like it's going to be that easy. We should be able to win this one. Yeah, there you go. Maybe just push immediately that way. Just because you can. You go that. Can you go there too? If you force the attack, you probably can circle these guys and kill them off. Come on. And Bingo was his name out. Immediately attack here. Get rid of these guys. Drain them with their strength. Good. God, I love helicopters so much. Help out, help out. So good. It's just so good. The Boer Republic is coming back, my friends. No restraints. So truly and defeat and demoralize an enemy is not a test of steel or blood, but of resolve. We must break our enemies to fight or will to fight by demonstrating our resolve. Regrettably, our adherence to trivialities like the conventions of war and human rights has only hampered our efforts in this war. It follows to the fear of Bowman to make the unthinkable choice to sever all existing agreements between our side and theirs, including those on treatment of prisoners of war, or at least as General Staff calls them, dead weight. The night grows savage, let us howl with wolves and let grow fangs to match. All right, so over here, we're going to go ahead and... I can lower support again. Ally control percentage. We need less... These guys have less support. Oh, the hair increased power, probably. There you go. Is it still 49%? Yeah, we still need more power. More power. All right, why are you guys up there? Yeah, we got to come back over here. Oh, we can probably circle these guys pretty quickly. I wish we had more political power too. I mean, we could really use more. Get a war report. How is this looking? 20%, 21.5 small protests. The longer we wait, the worse it gets for us, so.
Good, Cape Town has fallen. Oh, that's lagging. That's, it was definitely lagging there. Beautiful, coup in, ah, that's why, coup, a coup in Scotland, eh? Gonna hop on, defeat him there. Don't lose, I don't care what the strength is like, you are not allowed to lose. Uh, rallies, remind Hungary of the past glories. Three and five, well maybe we'll win here. Finally, five, up to five points, five points. Oh, we'll do this one maybe. It's only, it only costs guns. Why can't other things cost guns? It doesn't make, it doesn't make any sense why that one costs so much sometimes. Good, we're slowly winning, killing off the enemy divisions, good. That was pretty costly, but that's alright. Oh, the Ab of the Abdel in Africa. The Ab the military intelligence service for the Ab Wehrmacht may prove invaluable, ensuring our victory in what is becoming an increasingly complex tactical situation. The ability to predict enemy action will assist us in outmaneuvering functionally superior forces on the field and give us the advantage of spreading out conventional combat areas. Our generals are already crafting a doctrine they refer to as shock method. Shock and awe to make use of these capabilities and increasing or increase in funding to the Ab will accelerate the rollout of this doctrine and help save precious Aryan lives. The choice, quite frankly, makes itself very good. Very, very good. Delightful. More interactions. Lower the power of the banks. Good. Now we're still at 49%. Increase reformist loyalty, but god dang it, we don't have enough political power. That sucks so much. I mean, as long as the conservatives are okay, I'm okay with that. I, we would really like the, the reformist power is 441, but whatever. You know, I mean, we're trying the best we can with this. Port Elizabeth next. Combine Blitz. Good. Let's go grab some adaptive command tanks. Infantry. That's not bad. Better recovery and defense or planned assault. More max planning. No, nah, adaptive command is the way to go. East London. Take East London. We actually might be able to capitulate them now, maybe? Oh, we did it! Oh, we did it. Ah, the Boer Republic. Beautiful, my friends. Herzog is ours. The end of the South African War. I knew we could do it. That took a, quite a while, too, so. I knew we didn't have to get that involved into it, so. We just had to send thousands of guys over and let them die and fight. That's all. Just normal just normal things, you know. Actually, now we can cut this, too. There we go. Helps out. Not much, but whatever. Cool, the best gear. After this one, I'm going to do industrial revitalization. The grocery branches of the Reich industry suffered greatly during the Burger Creek. With heavy fighting, having damaged or destroyed significant portions of our industry. Rebuilding everything will take a considerable amount of time to accomplish, but to begin, we must at least help one of Germany's three industrial sectors. Rheinische Central or Süddeutsche Industries, which will not only assist in our return to economic normalcy, but is bound to earn the favors he can use later on down the line. Well, it looks like it's time for another focus, and actually, with the Hungarian thing, we actually got up to 10, so I guess there technically is a little bit more hope for us to win Hungary over, but I really doubt it. Actually, I did check some of the comments off screen as well, and there actually ended up being even more support for us taking out Denmark, so I guess we made the right call. Regardless, we have now four divisions of boys that like to fly in helicopters, and we just finished industrial revitalization. Let's see, make new friends new. Academic investment. Ooh, academic would be academic base begins to rapidly improve, which would not be bad. More conservative loyalty. Or armed professionalism will begin to improve. Ooh, more population too. I kinda like that. And actually right now the only thing that's going down is industrial expertise, which is not good. Mass mechanization is going up for agriculture. Poverty rate is slowly going up. Army professionalism. We already have a professional army. That's pretty good. We don't have Spartanic discipline, but not bad. Military redeployments. Uh, reintegration efforts. Conservatives get more loyalty overall. Greeks mean loses power. Smoke them out. Conservatives get more loyalty, but also lose more power. Uh, let's see, we're all German. Some are more German than others. Army professionals, a month of change goes up by one. I kind of like that. Frieden in Reich. Let the money flow. I like more growth. Uh, cola. Actually, can you do anything else here? No, we've already won, so. Can we actually do this one? You don't meet the requirements, so it's pretty much over for that. No end, no sight and end. And uh, on a sing, end on a sing. Sieg, I mean sieg. Oh, it's not bad. Conservative loyalty goes up. Makische Stahl. Factory output of military factory construction speed. Bayerische Technik. Or Siemens Welt. Civilian factory construction speed. Well, I love the 5%. Um, let's go with Bayerische. Just because I want to get more... Factory construction speed. 5% overall is not bad. Let's go. I like civilian factories though. 
So, in his wisdom, Fyodor Bormann has chosen to support the South German industry, notably conservative in its beliefs. The vast majority of these South German industries sided with Bormann during the Volga Krieg. With these, with there being little political threat from these industries, there is nothing to dissuade or investment. Furthermore, these specific industries are known for their technological innovation, which may benefit the Reich in the long, long run. And which, now, we're still going to do some more stuff here. But at the same time, I still want to consider doing some stuff down here. The 10 is good. The line of Crimea, let's finally do that. Return of the fleet. Sources exclusive to the Volks... Volkischia Beobachter reported that with the end of the civil war conflict within the Reich's heartland, the Kriegsmarine currently stationed in Kremar are making preparations for the return to Germany. Admiral Karl Dennis, who commanded the fleet, be removed from Germany during the conflict in order to prevent it from falling into the wrong hands, reportedly approved the Fuhrer Bormann's succession and his heartfelt work to restore peace. Admiral Dennis's reputation pre precedes him, and few of the pretenders voiced objections at his absence, either fearing his ire should he turn his fleet's guns upon them or foolishly hope to curry favor in the event of their victory. The Admiral Hall Jew, however, refusing to put his ships at risk for any other than the rightful Fuhrer. The Fuhrer is expected to roll out the red carpet for his friend and ally, no doubt honors are in order. Readers uh, with sons in the Kriegsmarine will now doubt that he relieved to know, be relieved to know that they are boys, the boys are coming home. Bring the boys back home? Yes, please. Very nice. Criticize the central government? No, we good. Anything else up north? Nope. We're doing pretty darn well. We're training a lot of guys and we just lost all our army XP because Shellshock Wehrmacht goes down, so training these guys makes no sense for now. The Jade Harbor. The Harbor at Wilhelmshaven had not been so full in years. The bustling activity of the Jade Bight uh, had been driven to a frenetic dash, frantic dash for a position against the vast warships that had taken over the harbor, sitting there like great gray icebergs. The Kriegsmarine, long absent from the frantic battle that had defied, defined the recent times, had returned. Dark times, the darkest the Reich has seen in decades. In dark times, hard choices must be made. A man must realize that his own ego is of no importance in comparison with the existence of the nation. Admiral Dernitz knew there was no honor in his choice to remove the Kriegsmarine from the war, but he knew it was a choice necessary for the good of his fatherland. That is true honor. Dernitz and Bormann stood side by side, their podium sufficiently far from the audience that none could see the fear of sideways glance, or the Admiral's hint of a scowl. It was a day of peace after all, and people were looking forward rather than at the cracks in the walls they stood on. They were mocked his hole once more. Ah, oh, good. If that's the case, do we get, uh, oh, shippies. Ah, the fleet is back, my friends. That's a lot of carriers and battleships. Wow. There we go. What do we have here? Subs, subs, that's fine. The Kriegsmarine is not looking very thick now, is it? Um, there is a lot of civilian budget boost, huh? Well, you guys can be led by, that's a lot of seawalls. Kashmir? That's fine. There you go. And each cut, cut one down further into half as well. Halfies. Keep spending more money on the civilian budget because we can keep making more civilian factories. Go, 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 go. We're even building it, uh, stuff on there. Great on the Black Sea. On the Black Sea. With the departure of the Kriegsmarine from the Th Theodor Ishhafen, the greatest port of the Black Sea fell sun. The port made up of the overwhelming majority of the employment in the city, be it directly through the thousands of dockers and Steville doors that serve Steve doors that serve as the bloated ships that usually occluded the horizon from vision like ocean going skyscrapers or directly in the countless beer halls, restaurants, and whorehouses that sprung up since the peninsula was wrestled from its Slavic occupiers. While the departure of the fleet may have caused a, a brief economic crisis among the city going Germans, the disappearance of drunken sailors marked for a few remaining Ukrainians a rare moment for a respite from robbery and rape. Not for long, however, the departure of the Kriegsmarine was not an ending, but another beginning, a reconnection with the Reich. The warships returned in fewer numbers, but accompanied by countless other vessels with shipments of beer crafts and others useful supplies. With the connection to Germany restored, Krim now has both a navy to maintain its in fighting fitness, and the funds to do so again. Phil Graf fails the streets again. Beautiful! We straight up annex them. Awesome. That's actually really, really good. Uh, see Battalion. There you go. And defend against those dastardly dudes over here. Because we can. I don't know. It doesn't really matter to me. Reminder of them who are the friends in Hungary. So there's another one. Eight and one. So we have a 33% chance to do well. promote national daddyism. There is a 50% chance that we get a good number here. So, hmm. 50% chance. I don't want to lose political power. 50% chance. Well, the mods to promote national daddyism. Let's see what happens. Some more lag. Tensions in the Vikes. Uh, oh. The general government, once thought to be a genuine success with regard to the process of Germanization, fell into. Oh my god, please, game, stop lagging as much, please. 
Uh, with regards to the process of Germanization, fell into the chaos soon after the commencement of the Book of Three, a quite embarrassing example of our in incomprehensible bureaucracy. The Reformation of Poland poses a considerable threat to the Gross Germanic Reich. We cannot allow for the existence as an independent state to continue. The anti hutic cabal today, the Reich's Minister for the Colonies, has received a heavily encrypted message from one of the former colonial administrators in Central Africa who managed to escape from the newly proclaimed Reichstadt. Despite our demands for answers, he has given us little information apart from the message itself, and then disappeared, saying they didn't want to see anything like what he had seen in the days of the coup. After decoding the cipher, we understood why the man was so secretive, and the message was so potentially dangerous to bear, claiming to represent a small clique of officers and bureaucrats who still serve this true German government even while trapped within Hutig's hellish realm. Kai Uwe von Hassel, self-appointed leader of the anti hutig cabal, asks for funds, asks for funds and reinforcements to prepare for the ground for a counter-coup, promising to reestablish German rule in the African colonies after the madman has been opposed. Our advisors are extremely skeptical about their chances of success, but they still urge us to support them. Everyone knows that Hutig's dreams of a racially pure Africa will end up into a nightmare of unimaginable proportions and, according to them, when this happens, the cabal should strike swiftly, securing at least some land to allow our return to the Dark Continent. Despite the low chances of success, this is still an endeavor worth trying. There are no risks. Someday, the Reichstag will surely collapse with or without our intervention, and when this happens, having a loyal administration in charge of even a small part of Africa will be a just enough justification to reestablish a permanent and most lucrative presence in these resource-rich lands. Who doesn't know what expects him? Let's go broken, they'll kill, even kill each other. Wow. Now, I definitely want to play as the Gross Afrikanische Reichstag eventually someday. So, Africa forevermore, I know a target. I really want to play as this group here someday. I really, really want to. Wow, minus 60% unrest or stabilities. Holy bad words. Legacy of the Traitors. Prophets from Wallenstadt. The African Triumph. The Drums of War. Oh boy, damage of gear since plus 50%. That is not good. They got a lot of manpower, though, so that's not too bad for them. They all have this as cores? They do. That is a mammoth. Gross Africa Reichstadt. I love it. All right. Ooh, let the money flow. Why not? Siemensfeld. Siemens AG, one of the gross Germanisches Reich foremost technological giants, has now grown to the point where it dominates the Reich's technology markets with ease. This, of course, is a direct result of Firman Bonds meddling in the German economy and industry, which is good for us as their dominance will likely secure the Reich's lead in technology for decades to come. Good. Issue of Slovakia. Or oh, no, we'll do tensions in the bike cell first. That's probably better for us. Oh, hello? Oh, we have no general. Hans Krebs. We gotta do this one. Chaos in the Vikesum. Among the foreign policy initiatives announced by the Reichskanzlei, Reichskanzlei, yeah, none have prompted more attention and worry than the Fuhrer's announcements that he will seek to resolve once again the Polish question. Perhaps aware of the sensitivity of the situation, Fuhrer Bormann has issued an unexpectedly wide call of policy proposals in the days preceding his final, de final decision. As the days wears on, the debate narrows to two options. The first contends that instead of wasting lives and equipment to reestablish a clearly defunct general government, the Reich should negotiate and establish a Polish client state. The militarists in the party and the Wehrmacht are bitterly opposed, asking why the Reich should bind itself in making concessions to the Polish Untermenschen, and it remains unclear what the Poles will demand in response. The competing officers are elegantly slip on his face, if costly, an ultimatum for the Polish state to, resent, to surrender to a renewed general government, or to face forced reintegration into the Reich Einheitspakt. There is little doubt about the proposal will be refused, and even less doubt that the Poles can resist, and the militarists are counting on a swift victory to buoy the spirit of our people at home. As the Fuhrer moves his options, Wehrmacht and Polish divisions assemble the border, digging trenches to the echoes of the last war. The Poles will have a place in our new world order, where foreigners get way more loyalty, wow, or the new order will be remade through fire and blood. I'd love to do... I really want to take a Poland, but... The Poles will have a place in the new order. That is kind of... That is... This is a bit more than... People said this was, these were minor reforms. That's an extreme reform, I say. We're working with the Poles? Whoa. The preparations of Danzig negotiations. A diplomats had worked feverishly for days, laying the foundations for impending negotiations for the new Polish government. The task had been far harder than they had imagined. For starters, there were a few Polish speakers left in the foreign ministry, let alone the wider German government. Polish had been declared a dead language, useful only to hysterians, just as one of the many untruths in the late Hans Franks reports to Germania. Much of the work was now complete. They found a handful of Polish translators, identified the red lines, and even settled on the menu for the good working lunches. A formal banquet would be too good for the polls. All that remained was to send the invitations and to prepare the city where the negoti negotiations would take place, Danzig. The city had been the stated cause for the last war and would now play host to negotiations to prevent the next one. It was an ironic compromise, for the Poles were unwilling to travel to Germania, and the Reich's diplomats would not set foot in hostile territory. Whatever happened now, history would be made again in Danzig. Send the invitations out. And ten. Oh, we got ten again! Wow, this is, this is exciting, isn't it? Betrayal on all fronts. 
The air in Bowman's office was dense with a haze of cigarette smoke as Walter Havel stood, suffering through the foul-smelling air produced by his fear. He attempted to continue his briefing, halting occasionally to release a much-needed cough. And my fear, it is believed that Rex Commissar Schenk was not so fortunate as Rex Commissar Müller. An or intercepted communication from his internal African aircraft would appear to insinuate that the astute vest African Rex Commissar was killed in Kalmine. Havel finished. The fear once again did not reply, continuing to stare at the wall with glazed eyes, moving only to extinguish his spent cigarettes and let another. Havel could not help but contemplate himself to himself as he stood in uneasy silence. Was this the same man who, who, in whom the German people had placed a confidence? Havel would not be left long to assault as the fear returned to life. The Reich is built by these effing traitors. Even the halls of Germania have proven to be nothing but disloyal. Afri but disloyal. Africa comes as no surprise to me. Would you like me to issue an official condemnation? Havel continued, relieved to be freed of the fear's awkward silence. Yeah. Make it known that traitorous adventurers like Kutik have no place in my Reich. We will grant him his due punishment once the usurpers are dealt with. Bowman finished, before returning to yet another tobacco cigarette. Right away, my fear, he acknowledged before doubling back and exiting the smoke choked room. How he rejoiced to finally escape that hazy office. Disloyalty knows no borders. But this, this hungry thing is getting really interesting. We're at 10. We got lucky. 25% chance to get up to 10 perfectly. Wow. And, okay, so I want to do this with Slovakia, but we got to keep doing our stuff here as well, because we still only have 49... Oh, 50%! We're now 50% of allied control percentages. We need at least 51 to make us feel really good. More power. We need, Let's get more power first. And after we get more power, we're going to increase more reform. That's the way we're going to do it from here on out. Cool? Cool. Uh, to get more power, we could lower the power here, or just raise power from the hair. Um, hmm. IG Fobin? The church would not be bad. Wait, did that lower it? It looked like it lowered it. 151? 161. Well, maybe Well, maybe we'll just lower it. From, is, is it lowered? I don't know. I don't like that. This seems very confusing. It seems... Oh! The African Cabal! If we're to salvage anything out of our southern colonies, it's imperative that we support Kai Uwe von Hasso's fifth column while within the Reichstag. While well, those starting strength of 3.4% derives primarily from our past actions in Africa, we can drive up the support by supplying rebels and paying off their African administrators. Moreover, we must protect the Cabal from the decay it will surely undergo once Hutik attempts to extirpate it from its domain. Alternatively, the Cabal situation could be manipulated to our political advantage held back in the high mat, at the cost of its chances of overthrowing Hutik. Armed friendly rebels? Sure. Bolster anti-Hutic factions, why not? Fund the Cabal. Cover up Cabal efforts. Provide training. Monthly decay will decrease by one. How much is it going to decrease by? Obfuscate funding sources. Well, it's not bad. We'll see what happens. The question of Polish autonomy. After a halting and awkward exchange of credentials, the German and Polish negotiating teams took their places on opposite ends of the oak table. Both sides sat stiff and inflexible in their seats, anticipating a long and arduous discussion. Surprisingly, the Polish lead negotiator opened with a clear and concise agreement. Or statement. Though we were representatives of a free Poland, we were keenly aware of our material dispis disparity within with the German Reich. There's no distinguishing this fact, and accordingly we will not camouflage our aims behind plausible, implausible fictions. While we welcome this opportunity for discussion, if our minimum guarantees cannot be met, then we will spare ourselves from this, even this last, this last fiction. For Poland's honor demands it. The, Pol the German delegation digested the statement, both irritated at the Poles' presumptuousness and relieved at their bluntness. It seemed the negotiations would be short. The autonomy of the Polish Republic must be guaranteed. Non-Polish authorities, military or civilian, must not be infringed on the state affairs and workings of the Polish Republic, its legislature, or any other organ of state. I apologize for my mispronunciations of words. My body's just going crazy. We can guarantee as much. Negotiations were indeed short. Um... I don't think we can do that. They're short. I, I don't think we can do that. I mean, yeah, but they shouldn't exist. I mean, frankly, they just should not exist. The Siemens Welt. Good. Let the money flow. Well, it's, well we can get more to growth. The last generation will, will go down even more. The growth of the right now, industry now starting to get back on its feet. It's evident to the Reich's most experienced and well-versed economists that the state shall now begin to earn significant profit once more. With this in mind, all fear Bormann has to say is, let the money flow, covering the nation in the printed green of the Reichsmark. The question of German colonization. Nobody had moved from their seats, a fragile silence punctuated only by ticking seconds. The German lead negotiator nodded while his side, or his aide, nodded down 
the Polish demand in his notebook. The Polish negotiator continued, continued to read out his demands. German colonization of sovereign Polish territory, as well as the forcible assimilation of Poles into the German ethno-linguistic sphere, will end immediately. The German negotiator leaned forward. Wait, imprecision will be the death of all of us. Define sovereign territory, claimed or held, and what becomes of the Germans who remain in the territory held by your organization. As I said before, these are our minimum demands. Any Germanization policy stops before this day forward, and the Poles shall be allowed to be Poles in Polish lands. The Polish negotiator did not break eye contact with his German counterpart. Everything else is open for negotiation. Very well, we will make the price of our steam. Of our steam. Should we get him? Yeah, I mean, if we do that, we're literally just abandoning Leibniz realm. I mean, come on. Like, there's there's a th case to have minor reforms, but no, no. This is going to be very, very short negotiations. Seven fronts. We will strengthen the cabal. Strength of the cabal was increased by 7.5%. Um, or implicate our political enemies. Ooh, we get more political power. Uh, I really want that extra political power. We'll do that for now. Siphon funds in the Reichstadt, huh? Hmm. The question of documentation. After a quick huddle amongst the German negotiating team, the German diplomat responded, I look forward to the continuing negotiations in. The Polish negotiator's expression hardened. The Germans were clever. There was no doubt there would be trouble if the negotiations continued. But it beat having the Wehrmacht storm the border. In the weaker position, that would have to be good enough. The government, lands, people, culture, and language, all of their associated in institutions are to be formally recognized as Polish. They will be to be referred to as much in any and all official documentation, diplomatic communications, and government policy of the Greater German Reich. The German delegation pursed their lips. While the question logically followed from the question of autonomy posed earlier, the legal termination or terminology of the various states in the Einheitspact posed specific problems. Accepting these demands would make Poland, for all intents and purposes, more similar to the pre-war civil pre-civil war kingdom of England and the French state, accorded, accorded far more respect and prestige than the colonial Reichskommissar that had controlled much of the Eastern Europe. And on Germany's doorstep, the question so simple in writing was momentous in the implications for the Einheitspact. The Germans withdrew into a huddle once more. A better pill swell, but it will do for Germany? No. Uh, we'll, we'll go to that one. Why not? We'll do that one. That's fine. We must protect the Cabal from decay, huh? Final proposal. Bowman read through the proposal, blinking thrice, then read through it again. The negotiators and Danzig had come through with something. Infuriating and unexpected. He expected them to fail, and for the tanks to be rolling across the border in a matter of hours, instead they'd be they cabled a document with a list of Polish demands, along with their own observed observations about the right could stand again from these talks. Demands. Those Polish swine thinking themselves worthy of dictating in terms of the Greater German Reich, autonomy and anti colonization and elevated status within the Einheits Pact? Bowman scowled. He could crush those Poles in one hand, send them running for the hills like in nineteen thirty nine in the other. But he knew that the party in the world was watching. He hadn't reached for the force and had to reach for force as his first option, keeping everyone in the party guessing and the world hopeful. As he read through the rest of his documents, he saw the ploy of his negotiators taking shape. The full forfeiture of Polish territorial claims, guarantees for the rights of what Germans remained in Polish held lands, and open market for German corporate corporations. Poland would be free, but only name, and that wouldn't be enough? German domination will not be questioned. God dang it, militarism goes up by strength? Come on. That's stupid. No, 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 no. We already said no to quite a few of that stuff, so that should not happen. But, you know what? Maybe Poland won't accept. Because two out of the three of the demands, we said no. We said absolutely not. So, I'm going to assume that the things are going to fall through. Oh, look at that. Less than 9 billion. Nice. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of civilian factories to make. Volshaw's response. Stupid bad people, muttered Bowman as he scrunched up the Polish response and dropped it into the waste paper bin. Don't know what's good for them. The Fuhrer produced a thick African cigar from a drawer and lit it up. Uh, the... Uh, Taking a deep puff and leaning forward to stare over his desk at the nervous, sweating secretary before him. What? he asked, brow furling. The secretary opened and closed his mouth a few times, barely able to get a word. My fear, he stammered. Should I, uh, <clears throat> inform someone? Bowman shot upright, dropping his cigar and slamming his palms down on the desk. What do you think? Tell High Command to get their crap together and put those poles in the dirt. The secretary stumbled back, hesitantly moving to the fo to for the door. Now, Bowman bellowed, seeing the skinny young man fleeing for the telephone. In truth, it was a preferred solution. Hitler had recognized the obstinate and now non-malleable nature of the poles, even more so than other Slavs. They were feeble-minded, stubborn, and useless for anything more than menial agricultural labor. Why Bowman ever thought they could ever actually be reasoned with was beyond him now. It had been worth a try, at least, if only to spare a little Aryan blood. That the Poles could not recognize their own correct place in the world was no fault of his, though, and so the general government would be reestablished atop the mass grave of the Polish race. And they wanted to die soon and quickly, rather than later and slowly. That was fine by Bormann. No one will miss them. The dream falters. Crush them. No mercy. Well, they chose their fate. We must choose ours. Reclaiming the pact. Ooh, they choose Slovakia. Having annexed the territory of Bormann and Maur, and the Reich turns its somewhat mo monolithic gaze to the territory of Slovakia, surrounded with no friendly nations that back them up, and being simple to return back into the fold of the pact, we will issue them a concise ultimatum. They will either join, or we will smash their open their pitiful army, march straight into Bratislava. 
To the south of Germany, bordering our territories on Schleisen and Mähren, lie the Carpathian Mountains, this great wall of rock age that newly unified Hungary in the 9th century, and before that had been the barrier of even the great Romans that could not reach before being halted in the eastern expansion. It's a bold walk and a blight on the influence of the Balkans and beyond. There is a solution there, albeit a simple one. Winning over Slovakia would bypass the Carpathians and give the Reich a wider border with Hungary. Additionally, the reintegration of Slovakia into the Pact would regain Germany an old ally, increasing our legitimacy in the eyes of both the public and abroad. Concerning this, the fear has sent an ultimatum to the Bratislava to join the Pact face invasion seems an obvious obvious choice so let's go and do this increase our power once again because we lost probably a little bit more power maybe and by increasing our own power we're gonna actually decrease the power of the banks yeah militarist I guess subtract five power from the banks so that 166 now it's 161 that's a little better two one two four for total allied power improved jet planes cool and anti-tank I know this video's gone just a little bit longer than normal, just because I wanted to get through this a little bit more. Uh, the South African War lasted much longer than I thought it would, so... I would like to smash the heck out of the Poles first. Schadlecker wins in Oslin, same old from Oslin. Hold one more, and we look up quite a bit. Let the money flow. And military redeployment, the elephant in the room. That being said, there's an elephant in the room, and one problem that we've yet to tackle and must... Uh, immediately tackle. If our new Reich is to bloom like the old, the problem being, where do we store all the slaves? Of course, the original slave clamps have unfortunately been largely destroyed in the flames of the Burger Creek, yet we can allow these inferior undesirables to walk among us as free men. We must come to a quick decision on the matter or risk the Reich itself. The big lie. My fear, I am pleased to report that off and Doppelganger is proceeding in orderly fashion, and final arrangements will be completed by the end of the week. Testing at Pinewood House has produced some exceptionally convincing evidence to incriminate the Poles thanks to efforts of our forensic scientists and a pioneer detachment. Additionally, recent raids over the border by Polish terrorists, whether they are part of the Home, ar home Army, I cannot say, have provided us with concrete evidence of actual crimes. Needless to say, this is more than welcome despite the loss of German lives involved. Not since the liberation of the Baltic have we possessed more ample evidence of our enemies' atrocities real or otherwise. I've taken the liberty of procuring some slaves to provide our Orpel and Lancer corpses. In accordance with your recommendations, all our former German citizens with their official identification are sword. The bureaucrats involved were more than eager to help with when your name was mentioned, my fear. Just a few more days and we will be ready to launch the operation on your order. I assure you that the Abdel's work will have even the Jews' puppet media dancing to your tune. Sieg Heil. With a satisfied smile and the practice pen strokes of a career bureaucrat, Bowman signed off on Galen's report before stamping the symbol of his office on an operational dossier. This time, with a little chicanery, the Wehrmacht would arrive in Poland as peacekeepers. Could the OFN truly oppose such noble acts done for the peace and security of Europe? They are terrorists, after all, but unfortunately, that's going to end today's episode. If you enjoyed it, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow, as we shall be reaffirming our strength in Europe and crushing all who oppose us. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day.